Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeff Rowley. Uh, this is my last stop on the speed dating circuit that we're doing. I, I hope that I can impress you enough that later on, if you have risk questions, you'll invite me out for a second date. Um, I have been managing risk for public entities uh, for 28 years, um, most of that in uh, local government, uh, cities and counties, and I'm now the claims manager and loss prevention manager for the Utah Local Governments Trust. And I've been asked to talk to you for a few minutes about the kinds of risks that you didn't know you were getting into when you put your name on the ballot. Uh, risk man or public entities have the same risks as any business does. Um, public entities do what public entities do for a, in a lot of ways because public and or private sector just can't do it. Um, it takes the whole village to do some of the things that we do, like provide streets and roads and sidewalks, like water, but certainly police and fire. I mean, we wouldn't want to hire a private contractor to actually do our police work for us. So uh, governments do things that create an, or that have inherently a tremendous amount of risk involved in them. And so uh, risk management for public entities is really a big deal and something that you should be uh, familiar with. I work in South, or I live in South Jordan, excuse me, it's a great little town and just this week I got in the mail this the uh, monthly newsletter and this time it had on it Mayor Don Ramsey's State of the City Address. Uh, in that address she said, this past year has been another exercise in resilience as we have navigated the challenges of the pandemic and tried to find safe ways to do things and I'm sure you, your community has been doing the same thing, struggling through the pandemic and trying new things and thankfully we got back to some in-person activities last year. But her State of the City address went on to talk about some of the accomplishments for the city in 2021. That included opening up a new interchange on Bangor, or with Bangor Highway so that um, you didn't have to stop at 104 South. They built a new building and opened that up that houses fire police and some administrative offices in there. They held community events and carnivals that we missed out on in 2020. There were housing projects and community development projects and land use. Now all of those things perhaps uh, are issues that you're well familiar with, that you may have campaigned on. Some of these issues you want to see improved in your community and that's why you ran. But I can tell you without any embellishment that across the state there are entities that today are embroiled in claims and or litigation on every one of these issues and more uh, because of the, there's great risk in being a public entity. Uh, certainly with police, we've seen a lot of that in the last few years. Land use, oh, all the development in the state has created a backlog in the courts of cases for land use and development and inspections and all of those sort of sorts of things. Uh, and so government is a risky business. Governments face the same risks as private sectors plus. Um, you, uh, there are laws that uh, designate risk to you or things that you must do or face penalties under state law, certainly for tort claims. Those are your accidents uh, in your parks or on the streets land and property claims, contract claims, workers' compensation, U Utah State constitutional claims, which the private sector never gets into, and then, of course, the cyber liability claims. And then you have, of course, federal law, employment law, uh, ADA, that applies for your employees, but also, of course, in your communities as you try to make it safe uh, and comply with that law in your intersections and elsewhere, federal constitution claims, and cyber liability claims. If you happen to have a database that is breached, and that database may have held just residents that were in your city at one time, but now live in far-flung states across the union, you would then be uh, faced with addressing the laws for the state of Utah, federal laws, and every state where those people live. It's a big deal, uh, and it's a big problem. We also face a lot of risks from when we try to do good things like putting together community events. Let me just show you a quick video of, of such an, a happenstance. Somebody said, why don't we at our party have an ultralight fly over and drop candy? 
they dropped more than candy. Certainly the committee and the elected officials who put that event together thought they were putting together a day that would just be memorable and fun for everybody. Uh, but untoward things happen and they're going to happen while you are in office. So I'm here to help prevent that and help you protect yourself and your entities in just another 10 minutes. Uh, so risk management for public entities involves, uh, first of all, prevention and then mitigation and we'll talk mostly about prevention. As you work in your entities, you'll want to make sure that these things are in place. First of all, that you have current practices and policies. Uh, your policies should be up to date and it's, it's pretty easy to find that you've got policies that were made in 2010 that really don't reflect the world in 2022. Uh, and your operations may have stayed the same and, and therefore you're out of com compliance with law or you're not doing it the best way or uh, that they're not following the policy at all and doing it in ways that you haven't really considered. Is that the best way to do that? Is that the most protective for our entity? So make sure your policies are up to date. Documented inspection and maintenance program. That's for your sidewalks, for your streets, for your parks, for your parks equipments, for your pools, for your buildings. All of those things have preventative maintenance and they should be inspected on a regular basis. And those should be documented. Even if you have the best maintenance program, the best inspe inspection program, if you can't show that when it comes to litigation, you have no program and you have no defenses. So make sure it's good and documented. Empower your employees to address safety concerns. During my career, I've seen many times where employees have been afraid to say something about a practice or about a particular project that they were just a little concerned that that, that created a risk to the public or to themselves as employees and then untoward things happened. So make sure that your employees feel like you want them to speak out about the safety or um, better ways to do things to make, to make sure you reduce risk. Uh, contractual risk transfer. Can somebody tell me what that is, contractual risk transfer? You could say, well, it's you transfer risk through a contract. <laughs> and that's exactly what it is. Governments can't do everything for themselves and so we enter into a lot of contracts for services and for goods. Each of those contracts needs to be carefully thought out and there should be in each of those contract a defense and indemnification clause and a requirement that these entities that you're, in, you're contracted with have their own insurance. Because when something goes wrong because of something they did, there is no question that the uh, plaintiff's firms in our state are, are they're going to look at that company and say, okay, that's great, but the deep pockets are your pockets. And so they'll list you in there and they'll say you failed to contract, you failed to supervise, you failed to inspect, and they'll try to get money out of you. So putting in your contracts a provision that says if you cause something wrong, you agree to indemnify us, in other words, pay whatever the judgment there might be or the settlement and defend us, um, and that they have good insurance in place. Cultivate a culture of top-down safety and ownership. Safety programs work, but safety programs only work if they're supported by leadership. If your safety people come to you and say, we want to implement this new program because we think it's a better way to do it, or because there's a new standard, and your supervisors uh, say, you know, we've been doing this the same way for 50 years. I don't see any reason to change. Go ahead and put that in place, but you know, I'm not really going to say anything about it. How far do you think that goes? It goes nowhere. And that creates liability for you. At a minimum, you may injure some of your best employees and have them out of work for a short period of time or never back. And you don't want to either. Consider the risks for new, new ventures. As new elected officials, you know, I wish I could do this every year during my career, but I haven't had that opportunity, so I'm glad to be here today. You come in with fresh ideas and fresh enthusiasm, wanting to do things differently and better. Well, I'll tell you what, some of those ideas are gonna skyrocket. And some of those great ideas have been tried before, and those rockets have tipped over on the launch pad and created all kinds of fires and havoc. So it's a good idea when you say, let's, 
let's think about doing it this way. You don't just bowl forward with how are we going to get it done, but rather how are we going to get it done in the safest way? What are the consequences to the community? What new uh, resources do we need to have in place for this so that you take a real methodical way of, go of addressing that? And finally, your capital improvement pr uh, program needs to be documented and officially approved. Now I'm talking about the big expenditures, new buildings, maintenance on your buildings, roads, streets, uh, roads and sidewalks, water systems, all of those things have a life to them, they, have, they need maintenance. If uh, your managers don't have a program where they can come to you and say, we've got all of these problems in our systems, these are our priorities, and I, I want you to budget $100 for this. Uh, and then you say, okay, well, we've got other things to do with $100, so we're going to give you $60. Now, that's not everything you'd want, but maybe next year we'll give you the other $40. But that whole process documented process where you decide as those with the purse strings what you can put money toward and what you can't gives you what's called discretionary immunity. If you choose not to follow that process, if your leaders within your organization don't bring these problems forward, you know you've got a, a water line that has a propensity to break and it's caused problems in the past, but they're not bringing that to you, where are your defenses when something bad happens? There was a city in our community that had that happen just this last summer, flooded two homes. One of theirs was their just prior mayor with 300 plus thousand dollars worth of damages. You want to have a good inspection program and a good program where you can pre prevent liability because you've thought about it and you've put the resources that you have available towards whatever you can. Well, mitigation is great. I mean, uh, prevention is great, but when you get to this point, all you can do is mitigate, right? There's not much more you can do about it at this point except for mitigate. So a risk management program has, number one, a good and thoughtfully uh, put together uh, risk transfer or risk financing strategy. Public entities in the state of Utah of different size do it differently. Larger entities may self-insure every risk, so they retain the first $50,000 of any auto accident or slip and fall on their property or whatever. They may not be able to afford that, and so you buy insurance. And that insurance could be purchased through a pool like the Utah Local Governments Trust, where many communities come together, pool our resources, driving down the cost of that insurance. And then, of course, you'll want to have good claims and legal expertise in place. Another protection that governments have is what's called the Governmental Immunity Act. That act, which applies to state causes of action only, operates in two different ways. First of all, it's like a picket fence in a, in a, a snowball fight. If uh, you're ha in that fight, you want to be like right behind the fence so that you can come up and lob those snowballs but duck down and hide behind it. Some of the snowballs are going to get through, but a lot of them are, bro are blocked. For instance, under the act, you are immune and cannot be sued for your disaster response or for the control of epidemics, uh, latent defects on public improvements. Latent defects are defects that you can't see that could not have been known in advance of whatever caused the liability to, to arise. False imprisonment. You got about a minute or two people are here. Okay. Great. Um, your inspection program, management of floodwaters or the activity of wildlife. I'm going to move on, but if you have a moment, ask me a question about wildlife. I've got a funny story. It also uh, deals with uh, the limits that you can be sued for. Uh, a, a jury could come back against you this year and say, we think that you're liable for $10 million. A judge, though, has to adjust that judgment down to the governmental immunity cap at $3 million. You'll see over time that's gone in 2000 from 500000 to $3 million based upon legislative changes. So it's getting pretty expensive. Uh, but there is that limitation at least to protect you. Let me ask you something. How long does it take for an incident to happen that could cost you $3 million because of some kind of untoward event? Moments, right? But let me change that and turn it on its head. A lot of the things that go wrong are because of patterns, behaviors, and habits that your supervisors and you can see going on in your entities and correct in advance. That's where a safety program comes in. That's where conscientious supervisors can help prevent things. Even in the case of driving, if you have drivers that constantly speed, that run through stoplights or whatever, 
you can prevent that um, and reduce the number of those accidents. Risk management is there to help you. We can't prevent everything that's going to happen in your community. You can't prevent them all. But what we'd like to see you do is be able to say at the end of the day, I did everything I possibly could to prevent that from happening and to salve your conscience. Thank you. I appreciate your time.